Hello, everyone. We hey, are here up? to talk about the new Darktide board game. It is an interesting piece of Kill Team. Yeah, it's like an interesting Kill Team release. I don't actually... I think when we first got the announcement, we were both a little bit excited. But I think that excitement has been tempered by... Maybe the model releases, I think, on some level, definitely didn't help too much. Yeah, it seems kind of low effort. Um, like, it's it's a nifty idea, but um, it, uh, putting a little bit more effort into it, I think, could have brought it a long ways. Um, that being said, played it a little bit. It is, it is like, you know, it's kind of fun. Um, obviously, it would be more fun with people. It is designed to have a one to four players. Um, Travis lives in New York, so mm -hmm. it's not like we could just set it up and do a two-player demo game. And I live in Minnesota. But it sounds like there's... A there is a solo mode, which it seems like you've tried a little bit. How have you liked the individual play pattern for Darktide? Because I know that we've said that the difference between old kill team and new kill team is that new kill team's dice rolling mechanics just feel a lot better. And I think that was the big thing that they poured it over into Darktide, right? Yeah, so it's, it's super, super light kill team where... Um, you know, you, you roll four attacks and the target saves on three dice. Um, everyone's save characteristics are fixed instead of being data sheet specific. Um, it's, it's really, really boiled down. Um, and the, like having options, like there's, you can get some equipment options that kind of helps out a little bit. Um, with adding some flavor and things like that. But yeah, it's it's kind of just seems like it's a pick it up if you are looking to invite some friends to try this genre of game for the first time. Um, or if you have been interested in Warhammer tabletop gaming, but you've, you've never played it and you're wondering like, where's a good place to start? Um, this is a decent place to start because it comes with some models. You could build the Trader Guard in a configuration that would be more friendly to Kill Team if you do a little like research. And I'm sure people are going to be talking on Reddit to like, what's the best build to convert these models to eventually become a Kill Team. And yeah, I suspect that the the traitor guard plus the Ogren can basically be a blooded kill team, right? Yeah, and plus, you know, you could chaosify some of the other characters and uh, run it as a whole blooded kill team. Mm hmm. No, it definitely seems like they were going for the Dark Tide crowd that may have been may have flirted with 40k and knows there's a miniature game, and they're like, well. What is this about? I think if they see this on the shelves, maybe like a Barnes and Noble style product, because those I think did okay over time. It's like generally a pretty good deal on the price per model, and the game mechanics aren't super compelling, but it's enough for someone who's casually curious to like dip their toe in. But for us dedicated kill team people, and you know, people who are watching this channel are probably more dedicated kill team listeners or readers or players, it probably comes off as a little bit of a muddy product. Yeah, it definitely does. Like it's, it's not a hundred percent realized on like what it's trying to do and how it's trying to get there. It's kind of just like, uh, yeah, this is a psyker. Um, he, this is an ogren. Let's put them all in the same box. So you know, like it's a little hodgepodge. I think um, painting it all with the same scheme would help with that a little bit. But yeah, yeah, it's it's a little hodgepodge. Um, but I mean, it is kind of fun. It's just like you you set up on a hex grid. Um, there's, there's a deck building mechanic where you have an activation card for each model. So you just like shuffle up all the, uh, all the, all the cards there. And then if it is like the, the, the good guys team goes, it's like a blank, like inquisition operative card. And then otherwise it's a specific chaos model. Um, so it, it does kind of like run against AI. And I think that's a pretty good way to actually do like a, uh, a co-op style kill team game mode. Um, also, interestingly, there were some kill team terms that were kind of, like, cleaned up. Um, fusillade, for example, is literally just shoot twice. So, like, you've got your hotshot volley gun, and you can, you can unlock fusillade, and it's just, like, you, it's, you don't even have any penalties the second time you shoot. It's just, like, bolter discipline on your hotshot volley gun. 
You know, it's pretty interesting. So maybe it's, uh, maybe hints at if they ever change some of the mechanics, or they're flirting with ideas on how they could change mechanics. Because as we all know, Fusillade, pretty much one of the worst abilities in the game that pretty much has exactly one use, and it's to get around jumping in front of bullets. Because you target two models, your opponent jumps in the way, and then you redirect all of your shots into the target you want. Yeah. Which is not super interesting or super compelling, and it feels like rules lawyering but it is actually how most of those abilities work yeah it's it's kind of like cheesy yeah, gaming think obviously not what it was intended to be yeah i my my big my big miss on this is looking at the four models stylistically the psyker the ogren the zealot and the kasakran all just kind of don't look like they belong on the same team whereas like in dark tide the models look like they belong to an inquisition squad so i do think that's probably one of the bigger misses is like if they had edited the models just a little bit it would have made a better draw for the people who are coming in from the dark tide side but maybe their idea was this is what 40k looks like you know to 40k players but i do wish that they had just gone a little bit more unique and that would have made the box probably a little bit easier of a sell for some people who are curious and that way you could get copies out into the wild and then for all of those people who had friends who were into kill team you're like oh Look at these cool things, but now there's more of them out there because more people wanted those models to begin with. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, it's another product. It is another product. The, I am sure that. Have you heard anything about from anyone in your community about the announcement about the Dark Tide game? Because locally, I haven't heard too too much. So. When this video comes out, I'll be pushing this out to, you know, our local scenes just to see what people think about it. Because I am curious what the conversation will be like. Yeah, there is a little bit of discussion here where some people are like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. Um, just like based on the preview announcement. And, um, you know, some people were kind of like also saying the same things where, oh, these four models look kind of like hodgepodge. Or like, uh, this looks really low effort. Um, so there was a little bit of that surrounding it, um, but you know, I, like uh, the target audience for this, I really think I agree is not like people that are already playing Kill Team. It's it's like yeah, it's it's but it's like it's distant enough from how Kill Team plays that I feel like it's not really a great gateway because um, pretty much the only thing that's so you don't think players like, that play Dark Tide. Yeah, like players, yeah, that, players play that play Dark Tide, Tide are not going to easily transition. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and then I also would have expected if they were going to try to do something that was like directed at a video game player to have a first experience, that uh, I would have assumed they would have done 100% easy to build models in there. Because like I've put together plenty of GW's easy to build models, and it is like a delight. Like you don't even need glue. You like if you want to be like super duper casual and super simple um some people are gonna cringe when they hear this but you can just twist the pieces off the sprue and then put them together and there's no tools and there's no glue um and you know like go in there with like a pocket knife and then like clip off like scrape off all the little extra pieces like you can actually do that and you really don't need to have anything special um I, so like yeah i mean so this box is not like that you're telling me i was under the impression that these were push fit models these are not push fit models is no. what you're saying there's the pox walkers are push fit um the traitor guard are just straight up blooded um so like you could build the butcher and the flenser and like you could put a plasma pistol on your leader um and you could just like straight up build a bloody kill team out of this um and then the characters are not push fit either um i was i mean i was using kind of expired glue and but like the ogren was like a nightmare to put together i think it would have been easy if i used like I just went to the store and got some decent glue. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was like, oh, yeah, this is... These are not push fit. Yeah, interesting. I was definitely under the impression that that's, like, who this was directed at. So hearing that it's not push fit is interesting. How are, the, like, the quality of the components? Like, obviously, from the picture, there's the rule book, there's the Underworlds-looking hex boards, and there's, like, all of the cards. Do you feel like those components are nice that they would give a good first impression to people who are like curious about Warhammer 40k because that's seems like who this is directed at. Yeah, definitely. Like the the cards and the tokens and stuff are nice. Um like the all the tokens like popped out of the sprue immediately. There was no like mess of lasers, like laser dust and stuff which sometimes like stuff like that can have. Um the tokens like feel good. They feel like they're durable, like they're not just going to like die and fall apart on the first use. 
Um, because yeah, I mean, I've, I've played a couple games and now I'm waiting for it to go public and, uh, I probably will, you know, like, invite some friends over and, and, you know, it's gonna be more fun with people and, and I think it'll be, I think it'll be worth a couple evenings of casual, just super casual games. Yeah, I think it's, like, if people seem to enjoy it, you're like, well, you know, if you want, you could take this model and paint it, you know, or you can, like, walk them through painting some of these things. Just because, like, it doesn't really matter how Poxwalkers get painted. Poxwalkers are, like, the greatest contrast based ever. You just give it to your friend, you're like, hey, just slap paint on it. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it too hard. Yeah. Super accurate. Which I think is good. Like, having those sorts of things is nice. Maybe it could have been better if all of this was push fit, but, you know, maybe they wanted to make sure the sprues were good, good sprues. I, it's just, the Ogryn is so ugly. <laughs> and the Dark Tide Ogryn is so much cooler. He's got, like, the Inquisition stuff, he's got the Truncheon and all this other stuff. But we just got the, the big classic dumb Ogryn here. Yeah, not my favorite model. model. And it sounds like, not, it's like an old enough model where putting it together is not, not super pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, it's, definitely, it's definitely odd. Yeah, ultimately, you know, um, it is a little amusing. If the price is right, it's it's a good thing to, to pick up, like, to start a blooded kill team. Um, have a couple of fun casual game nights with the crew. Um, otherwise... Yeah, I think my core issue is I know the price, and it's going to be, I think, 110 US, which seems a little high for a kill team player, and then for other random people it does feel high especially if you don't know how to build or you don't know how to paint then there's definitely like a little bit of a learning jump so like it has to be someone who really enjoyed some part of dark tide who's like really interested in trying the game or someone really dedicated who wants a softer on ramp yeah just something everything about it it just seems like a little bit like from any angle the pieces don't quite fit in my opinion yeah that's definitely the vibe that I get from it. I think it looked kind of neat up front. I think the mechanics probably look like they play fun enough. It's just, it's probably a little bit too too expensive or it maybe didn't need to, I don't, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. It does feel a little bit expensive for something that has very little pass through over to the other game systems because you're never going to be able to use the squad of four in, in 40K because they don't really make sense together. A Kashkin solo doesn't do anything. The Zealot, I don't I don't know where he goes in 40k. The Psyker, I think, can be solo dolo. But the Ogren also needs a squad, too. So it's like a bunch of the models can't do anything else. They don't go in their own squad. And then they don't fit for kill, kill teams, teams. The, you have to combine the Ogren with the bad guys. So it's just kind of mess, messy all the way around. Yeah. I guess this would be a good box to, if like you, if you got it or a friend gifted it to you, you could build a blooded team that was way more imperial aligned. You know, like you paint your blooded like Cadians who escaped basically, and then the Ogren is just a normal Ogren and not a chaos Ogren, and then you can make your leader, you know, the Psyker or something, just to make it a little bit more flavorful. But yeah. Definitely, definitely odd. Hopefully the games are pretty amusing. Like the equipment is fun because I think that's a big part of Dark Tide, the Dark Tide experience is leveling up your Inquisition squad and going on harder and harder missions. So have you taken a look at some of the difficulties of the like system? Do you feel like there's a big challenge or are the stats flat enough where it doesn't change that much over time? Um, <clears throat> well, so like the, uh, there's a lot of like enemies hitting you on force. Which, you know, anyone that's played games long enough, you know that hitting on fours is very, very swingy. So, um, it's the challenge is really just like watch out because the enemy hits on fours. Um, and, you know, I did, I did like a few games, I didn't like play through the entire thing, but it looked like the difficulty was going to be pretty much the same across everything. Um, and it wasn't like super easy and it wasn't like super hard. Um, yeah, and like there is a level up element, but it is. It's not as exciting as I would have hoped because, like, basically, there's there's like a deck of cards of equipment that you can get. There's a deck of cards that's upgrades for each operative, and at the end of each game, mm -hmm. um, you, you can like unlock like your upgrades, but you you're still like limited to how many upgrades you can have. So <coughs> you start the game by like choosing two upgrades, 
and then you just choose the best ones, and then when you like r like random draw or choose other ones, you you have to swap them out. And it doesn't really feel like you're getting more powerful, especially if you just like poke around a little bit and you're like, oh, these are obviously the best too. And then you get a level up and you're mm. like, oh, I don't want to trade my best configuration though. Okay, so maybe a little bit of house ruling is going to be required. It might be a good skeleton for anyone looking for a narrative structure, I guess. You know, for any aspiring campaign players, maybe they could repurpose some of the rules as inspiration. Do the enemies level up over time? Or do you, like, as you... is there, There's, like, clearly best gear, but do the enemies, like, start feeling overwhelming? In the picture, they only show two of the hex boards. Do you expand out to more boards, or is it always played on the same small two boards? So there's actually four hex boards. Um, so it's, like... If the Underworld's boards, like, were cut, so instead of folding, it's just, like, all individual. So the, they can set up in different shapes and configurations. Um, they do get a little bit upgraded as it goes. So, like, the first couple missions, it's all just, like, troopers with rifles and poxwalkers. And then as you get later on, it, like, the comms guy is there. And then the comms guy gives everybody, like, balanced on their armor saves. Um... And then, like, later on, the Chieftain comes, and, like, he gives everybody a buff just, like, for his presence. Um, and then there's a Sniper, which can actually be, like, kind of a menace. Um, you gotta, like, get close to kill him. Um, but, yeah, so, like, it, the enemies do level up. Um, I feel like pretty much the... You could just start with the best build, and then maybe there's a couple... It's, like, I'm willing to trade out my targeted smite for, like, a blast smite if I am fighting a horde. Mm -hmm. is So there's like a little bit of, of like, you would trade a couple things out there. But um, not as much option, not as many options as like the actual video game where you, you know what you're going into, so you change out your loadout and whatever. So this is like much more fixed than that. Um, so it, it, it could be like, you know what you're getting into. Like the, the thing I looked at the most was like the Kassarkin who seems pretty solved, like, um, you can give him a laser light and you can give him fusillade and now he shoots twice and it's balanced um, as long as you're like mm. close range and that's just like way better than any of the other stuff he can do um, the psyker like I was like oh yeah I'd swap this spell out maybe sometimes and swap this spell out maybe sometimes um, I think the ogrin I, there's like a, some multiple options that seemed okay so you, you might want to like swap some of that out but um, so it is you know it's it's kind of going there. There's some stuff going on. I assume the enemies have a respawn mechanic in this game. Like, on the pictures, they show, like, the red boxes. I assume there's respawns. Because they mentioned there's only 20 miniatures in the box. There's no way that, you know, 16 enemies is going to be enough for four competent human players blasting people, I assume. Yeah. I mean, like, so there's 10 traitor guard models. There's six pox walkers, and there's four heroes is the actual, like official numbers in the box um there is a respawn mechanic um so it's the first couple missions it's all like pox walkers keep flooding in and there can't ever be more than six on the board at any given moment ultimately like it seems like some of these boards will start with 10 models and then might spawn like four more throughout the games or like eight more throughout the games so it's like I don't think you're ever killing more than, like, 20 models in one game unless you're, like, being overwhelmed and then you probably just, like, die and don't even make it to killing 20 anyways. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it works pretty well, you know, for for the models and, like, the danger level. And, like, you might be like, oh, yeah, like, it feels like I'm totally sweeping this map. And then all of a sudden, like, a las gun gets two crits in a hit and just, like, fully kills someone. And you're like, oh, okay. it It is still a fight. All right, all right. And I assume the heroes don't have a respawn mechanic. They're just trying to make it to the end of whatever each mission is. Yeah. And there was, there was like, each... So each mission is actually, like, three separate games smashed into one little, like, mini campaign. And in between mm -hmm. campaigns, you can, like, heal wounds. And there's, there's actually two different, like, explanations for how much you heal between missions. Where one of them is, like... Okay. You heal, incapacitated models heal, I think it was like D6 plus 5 or something. And then it, it's like, um, you like reload, rest, and do something else. There's like scouting options that you can do as well. Um, and if you're, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to take a second look. But it's it kind of, my first impression was maybe there was two clashing ways that you can heal between missions. 
depending on if you're incapacitated or not. But otherwise, it was very, very easy to read the rules and know what's going on. So I think they actually did a really good job for, like, a new player to just, like, just, like, quickly and easily look through. And, like, it's got a guide to painting. It's got a guide to setting, like, building your models. Um, it's got a little bit of fluff in there to, like read about the setting of the game um it's got your build instructions and your core rules like all in one thing and it's just kind of like you can read it in like 20 minutes and you're up to speed yeah so overall overall thoughts you know i know for anyone who's watching thank you for watching us you know don't forget to like share and subscribe but if you were gonna communicate one thing to anyone curious about the product having had it for a you know a, a week or so and getting a couple games of play what would you what would you say about it i would say um it is amusing like if a friend invited me to come check it out i would go do that you know just like a fun time playing games with the friends um i i don't know if i would buy it at full price but if i if it went on sale in a couple places i'd probably pick it up and and play it with the friends i think it's like Give it like a C. All right, all right. Okay, yeah. I think uh, if anyone is interested in in the rules, I suspect on eBay because the rules might get sold as a separate thing. The minis might get parted out separately. If anyone was interested, and they had all the models because none of these models is really all that hard to proxy or get. Like you could probably just play the game officially with the official stuff, just not with the models. And I suspect it'd be way cheaper. I am kind of the opinion from seeing all the stuff and talking to Jason that. It's like an okay product. Fine if you're interested in the Dark Tide side and you want to bring some friends in, but not a great kill team, kill team product. Just an okay kill team product. And I do wish that they'd gone a little bit harder on the minis just to give them a little bit of a lease on life because they, they do clash a little hard for, for my taste. Yeah, I mean, honestly, what I would have hoped for a kill team starter set, like a hex grid thing actually might be kind of a fun idea, but if they just had like... um you know, like some push fit Necrons, some push fit Space Marines, and even if like the model count was off, um, and then they put like data cards in there, and it was it's it's like no stratagems, like kill team Justian type vibes, but for both kill teams, and but something that could expand into like fully playing kill team, and then it's just simplified two player kill team on like these hex boards. I think that'd be a really good kill team intro. Yeah. Maybe this is not the kill team intro that we want, but it's definitely a kill team intro someone might have. So be on the lookout. And uh, if you guys have any thoughts or, you know, competing ideas, let us know. The recording is done and it's just in time. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Yeah, I think that's this one is going to chop up with you kind of like going over the actual product. Um, or you just want to, or are we gonna drop this uh, just 